history music. Wow, that was a shocker. Uh, Miles Goodwin has passed away. He was 75 years old. He was the driving force around April Wine for the entirety of their career. That was it. He was the guy that basically uh, came up with uh, all the songs, most of the songs. I shouldn't say all the songs, but basically April Wine was his band. That was it. Let me see if I can get my... Uh, died at 75 years old, had, had uh, substance abuse problems a lot of his life, uh, but basically it was um, uh, drinking. And he was very honest about it in his book, uh, Just Between You and Me. Uh, I bought the book. I enjoyed it. Uh, Miles was a tough interview. I interviewed Miles uh, years ago. He was drinking and he was a little grumpy. But uh, you know what? I'll say this about Miles Goodwin. I've said this many times that he uh, still gave me a good interview. He said, I don't feel like doing this. There we go. He said, I don't, I don't really feel like doing this this morning, uh, but you seem to know a lot about the band, so let's get on with it. Just from, I remember the first time I heard April Wine was um, the, the song that a lot of our American friends would have heard too. Um, you could have been a lady, the Hot Chocolate song that they, they covered. They also covered Bad Side of the Moon, the Elton John, Bernie Toppin song. Uh, but... Again, the driving force behind this band has always been uh, Miles Goodwin, but total shocker. I mean, their debut album, a lot of people call it the Feet album, um, had Fast Train on it, which was a minor hit in Canada. And then on record was the follow-up, which basically was, was the cover was a record. It, was, it looked like a, 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 a record. And... Um, it had, like I said, just between you and me, there was there was no space between the songs. One song melded right into the other song. Uh, after that was Electric Jewels, which had Jim Clench, the former, uh, he's passed away too, a few years ago, Jim Clench, who left after Stand Back and came back uh, in the, not sure if it was the 90s, but anyway, Jim's passed. And Steve Lang has passed, the, the bass player who replaced uh, Jim Clench. So Electric Jewels came out, and then Stand Back, and Stand Back had some really cute little uh, ballads on it and some rockers. Uh, uh, um, the whole world's going crazy after that. They, they also had a live album, I think it was 73 or 74, which I really, really liked. Um, but Miles Goodwin, like a trailblazer. And here's the thing about April Wine's my favorite Canadian band of all time. I had everything they did. They're the only band that I've ever seen seven times. Um, I And like I said, I interviewed uh, Miles Goodwin, Jerry Mercer, their second but main drummer who quit the band a few years ago, um, uh, Brian Greenway and Jim Clinch. So two of those four are no longer with us. Great interview. Hard interview to get. Tr tried over and over again when I met the band years ago. They uh, they all signed all my autographs. Just want to say hi to some people. Wow. So, oh, I'm, I might have started the wrong one here. Hold on. Hold on. I might have started the wrong live feed. Here, this is the one that I'm on. Sorry. There's two live feeds that came on. I'm not sure why I created two live feeds, but it did. Um, but anyway... Went to the show uh, that night, which was in, would have been 2000, oh, I forget, 2000, because I remember Miles Goodwin, if anyone's ever met Miles Goodwin, when he signs your autograph, he'll put the year beside it. So he, he did that, and he signed, I think, 20-some albums that we had because we were doing a big giveaway. If you're just joining us, Miles Goodwin, as a headline states, has passed away, he was 75 years old. Uh, not a lot of information so far. We know that he was in, admitted to the hospital a few years ago because of drinking problems. And he, just a few months ago, uh, not that long ago, decided to retire as the lead singer of April Wine, which was a shock to uh, Mark Parent or P Parent, uh, replaced him as the lead singer. He was never the same. Brian Greenway is the only guy left. Sorry if I'm babbling, but I'm just in shock that Miles has passed away. Uh, I'm happy to say that I've interviewed him once, but you know, Nature of the Beast was their biggest album. It was the one that crossed over the most in the U.S. Uh, uh, Just Between You and Me was the first single, but there was not a bad song on Nature of the Beast. And, uh, God, Harder, Faster, Before That was a great album. First Glance is 
with Roller where they started going heavier. You know, they always had the soft songs, uh, but they started going heavier for the U.S. market, and it just took off. Let me just read some of your comments. God, what a shock. I, I Like I said, I, if anyone has any more information, I'm just reading your comments on cause of death. But uh, uh, George Price says, this can't be real, can it? It's real. Double-checked it, triple-checked it. Uh, Tor Toro Porco's on here. Nice to have you on here to join us. Gina Martinez, rest in peace, Miles, great vocalist. And, and a very different vocalist. Um, having talked to a few of the... Um, um, a few of the guys in April Wine, I always told the same thing. And I told Miles the same thing. I said, you know what? I wouldn't have picked you as a lead singer, and I would have been wrong. Kind of like I would have been wrong by not picking John Anderson of Yes, because he had a similar voice, kind of similar a little bit, um, because it just worked out so well. Miles is a guy that you would think would be only good doing the ballads like Like a Lover, Like a Song from A Whole World's Going Crazy, just between you and me. Um, I uh, wouldn't want to lose your love from Stand Back. These are beautiful ballads. Uh, you won't dance with me. Remember that. There were so many songs that he would, you know, get on the piano and play in concert. I remember when the whole world was going crazy was coming out. They had the big jester kind of Mad Hatter guy in the back, which I do believe, if I remember, might have been made out of paper mache, but I'm not sure. Um, Frank said, "Serious bummer." Uh, Tortora Porco says, the sounds and songs of my youth. Very much for me, anyway. Like I said, favorite Canadian band. Sometimes people would tell me, they go, what? April, why is your favorite Canadian band? By far. I just love this band so much. I was the guy in high school touting the band. I was the guy in high school the night after the Juno Awards. Um, oh, uh, thank you for a super chat. Uh, oh, thank you, Tortora Porco. Appreciate that. Always appreciated. But um, I, uh, oh, he says, our past is slowly fading away in the rearview mirror. With Miles Goodwin, that is a, 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 that is a shocker. Um, Richie Henman, who was the last of the Henman brothers to tour with Miles. Remember, when Miles left April Wine, he was still touring and doing the songs that he wanted to. A lot of blues songs. His last few albums were blues albums. And he was... Uh, kind of doing that with R R Richie. And I interviewed Richie quite a few times to talk about Miles. And he says, you know, Miles was a different guy. Miles, you know, I know he passed away, but Miles could be a grumpy guy. He was his own man. He didn't suffer fools. Certainly did, didn't do it with me. But you know what? He ended up giving me a, a real honest interview. Because those are the kind of guys that if you're wrong in an interview, if you're wrong, he'll let you know. It's kind of like when you're, when people say, well, I want someone who challenges me in a relationship. Be careful what you ask for, right? But when you interview people like Miles Goodwin, you interview people like John Cougar Mellencamp, there are certain people that, Ted Nugent's one of those guys. Excuse me. You interview those guys, and if you screw up, if you, uh, Ian Tyson, the Canadian, I just interviewed Sylvia Tyson, and I asked her near the end of the interview because we were getting along well. I said, um, could, could Ian be kind of a I don't suffer fools kind of guy? She says, if you didn't get your facts straight, if you didn't do your homework, her ex-husband, Ian Tyson, who, of course, also recently passed away, she said he would get on you. So there was those are the kind of interviews. And I had a lot of problems with my Miles Goodwin interview after I did it because he was my hero and he was very short with me. But... He gave me a good interview. He, um, after he told me he didn't feel like doing it, to his credit, he said, well, you seem to know a lot about the band. Let's get to it. And we took a picture uh, of all the guys. You know, um, I did it one at a time. I didn't want to talk to the whole band at once because I knew I needed more time with Miles. Miles Goodwin was the leader of April Wine. He was the guy. You know, you you uh, if you're interviewing a lot of people from April Wine, you don't get Miles Goodwin. You don't have the main guy. Like I said, he's the one that created so, so many of the hits. Um, oh, uh, Keith, uh, Doc's Road. Keith was the guy. I was just leaving in my car. We are just getting, the in-laws are coming over tonight. We were just getting a few things. And I came in. I said, Shannon, I can't go with you. I've got to do this. This is like, Miles Goodwin is my Canadian icon more than anybody else. People say, well, you love Rick Emmett. You always interview Rick. 
Yes. And I get along with Rick way better than I ever got along with Miles. You know, I consider Rick Emmett a friend. But uh, as far as the, the pinnacle for me in Canadian music, it's always been Miles Goodwin. It's always been April Wine. People go, well, what about Russia? Go, Come on. You like what you like. You know, I'm not going to make excuses for the fr- there, And they were a huge Canadian band. But going back to the original point, at the night after the Juno Awards, which is sort of the Canadian version of the Grammy Awards, the night after, I'd always be the guy going to school in high school going, oh, yeah, well, the Rush happened to be bigger. Uh, Trooper happened to be bigger. I, you know, there's always a band that was somehow bigger than April Wine that year that they couldn't win the awards that I thought they should win. I'm going to go through some of the comments, and I'm going to, going to go through some of the hits. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of excited, but not in a very good way because I'm in shock that Miles has passed away. Uh, Michael B. Smith, every time they came to Calgary, uh, I picked up April Wine instead of Ozzy. And Max Belfield, oh, wow. Mark Marsh, when I saw April Wine open for Aerosmith 77, they blew Aerosmith away. Uh, Talman, Droneman Murphy. Uh, if you see K, yeah, they sang that from uh, the, what was the one after Nature of the Beast? Uh, bah, 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 power play, power play. Coming back to me now. So sad news. Thanks, Keith, for telling me. Paula Walsh, she wrote some things. James Bond, April Wine, played the Victoria Park in the summer a number of years ago. A free concert. The whole park was full. 20,000 people. Michael Brown, the thing I really hate about getting old is watching our heroes pass. Very true. And I was just telling Shannon, my wife, the other day that we haven't had a lot of people. Uh, the, leader of, the lead singer of the Pogues. But we expected him. Not to even reach the age that he reached because, I mean, April Wine, uh, Miles Goodwin had his times with uh, the sauce, but he quit. He cleaned himself up, as far as I know. I mean, that's he wrote that in his book. Uh, Melody, April Wine has been my fave Canadian band. Thank you, Melody. Uh, Tallman, uh, Droneman, Murphy, or, um, not to be vulgar, but they sang, yeah, if you see K, that's right. Hoping to get demonetized for even saying that. Oh, James Bond says, uh, the fast train, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, people would always ask me, are you going to I- interview Miles Goodwin again? I went, no, I have a good interview with him, and uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, again, you know, Miles didn't suffer fools. He, he could be a little grumpy sometimes. But for the most part, you knew what you were getting with Miles Goodwin. You know, uh, that's just the way, the way it was. Let me just get to some of the, um, some of the songs, and I'll get back to your comments in a second. It's strange, you know, at with my past with this band, I never, as he swallows heavily, I never thought that I would be online uh, ever announcing Miles Goodwin passing away. Never thought I would, considering. And all my friends, and already I got a lot of messages from my other friends who said, oh my God, your hero's dead, your hero's dead. Um, here, I'll get on to the April one thing. Jerry Mercer, their drummer, their second drummer, um, to me was one of the greatest drummers of all time. He used to do that drum solo, that crazy drum solo. Uh, let me just get to the discography. So they came out in 71 with their first album, which was simply titled April One. Fast Train was the song on there that was the hit. On Record came on in 72 the following year with the, the Hot Chocolate song. And it took me a while to go, what? It's a Hot Chocolate song. If you hear the original, you'll you'll say, what? Uh, it's very, very different. But it started with that instrumental Farkas, and then they would just get the album or, or stream it. It's well worth it. Would go right into You Could Have Been a Lady and, and uh, Drop Your Guns was on that album. Um, I think that was the only big hit single. Electric Jewels was the Lennon and McCartney version of April Wine, where Jim Clench sang some songs, Miles Goodwin sang some songs, and they would go back and forth. I mean, Jim Clinch was on, on record, but it was really highlighted on Electric Jewels. Weeping Widow was a single. Um, just like that got a lot of airplay. Lady Run, Lady Hyde. Uh, Cat's Claw. The Band Has Just Begun. What a great tune that was. Uh, and then the live album came out after that. That was one of the best live albums I've ever heard in my entire life. To me, this that was the live album that I like. Stand Back was a huge album for Maple One. That's the black cover. Uh, 
Do -do -do -do. There you go. Great cover with the Canon and uh, so a lot of hit singles off this record. First of all, Ooh, What a Night is one of the most popular April Wine songs of all time. Interestingly, sung by Jim Clench, their bass player, who has also passed away a few years ago. He left April Wine and he joined BTO for, for two albums. Uh, don't push me around, a lot of airplay. Come in, hear the band. Uh, uh, I Wouldn't Want to Lose Your Love was a big hit. Not for you, rock and roll. Not for you, not for rock and roll. Uh, man, you know, such a big band. And April Wine and Miles Goodwin, Miles was the guy. There was never, there would never in a million years, that's why I wouldn't go see April Wine now, ever in a million years be a band without, uh, a band like April Wine without Miles Goodwin. It was basically Miles Goodwin's band all the time. You know, the other guys made a big dent in the band's sound. Because remember, they had, during their heyday, they had Miles Goodwin on six-string electric guitar, Gary Moffat on six-string electric guitar, and Brian Greenway. Now, that was a sound. The guys were going for a hard rock sound. And then there was uh, Whole Rolls Going Crazy. A lot of people saw a few years ago that I built a, a clay version of that. It took me a long time. Oh, I got blurry. Thanks, Keith. I didn't know that. It's it's the feed here because I was downloading a video um, just as I was doing this, and I had to stop because I knew I would run out of bandwidth. If anyone is curious about the harder side of April Wine, the first song on the whole world's going crazy is called Gimme Love. It's one of my favorite all-time April Wine songs, just the guitar part in itself. And then Miles screams just before they get into it. Ah. Great song. But the singles on that is um, Like a Lover, Like a Song, and The Whole World's Going Crazy, the title song, which was sort of a, had a novelty sort of feel to it. Forever For Now followed that, which was supposed to be Miles Goodwin's solo album. In the long run, I think might have been a push from Aquarius Records, but they knew that an April One record would sell better than a Miles Goodwin solo album. That's why Forever For Now was more of a slower paced album the the leads uh, the, the title song was a single um you won't dance with me was a single and i think that was it from that that was the one right there forever for now with a new emblem for april one which was i always really liked it uh live at the elmo combo this one i have all of these signed by the band was basically April Wine secretly opening up for the Rolling Stones in the El Macombo Ballroom in Toronto. They kind of kept it under wraps. It kind of got out a little bit, but they wanted to record it in secret. And in the back of it, there's a nice note if you've got the album from the Stones to April Wine. Thank you for opening for us. But they, they, had, some, they had some new songs on there that we hadn't heard from April Wine. Teenage Love, Bob Segarini wrote that. Um, Juvenile Delinquent, he wrote that as well. Let me see if there's another one. She's No Angel, which was a single before, but was not on an album, if I remember correctly, which was written by uh, Miles Goodwin, Gary Moffat. And what do we have? And then the U.S., they hadn't had a big U.S. push since you could have been late in 72. But then First Glance came out, and I'll show you the cover of that album. First Glance came out, and that was, with Roller, that was a chance for April Wine to really make roads in the U.S. And they really, really did. They, they really cashed in on it. Brian Greenway was in the band by now. The first song on it, if you, if you know April Wine, Hot on the Wheels of Love, you know, like a car chase song. But they really went for that lane of, we can be a rock band. Let's be a rock band now. We've always kind of been a rock band, but we also did ballads. But let's concentrate on on a lot of rockers. Get Ready for Love is one of my favorite songs. Uh, rock and Roll is a Vicious Game. Like um, so many songs, uh, like Bad Company, uh, Superstar, uh, uh, Tom Petty. Uh, uh, what's the name of the Tom Petty song that uh, is about rock and roll? Is it Into the Great Wide Open? No. Yeah, that's the one about the about the, the pitfalls of rock and roll. So Roller was a hit. Get Ready for Love, I remember, got a lot of airplay. Um, that's airplay. 
saw them. Their greatest hits was very, very big. It came out when I graduated in 1979. That's probably outside of the Harder Faster poster, which I have on the poster of this video, the most popular picture of April Wine. And it showed how popular they were. Here's the hits. Fast Train, Drop Your Guns, Weeping Widow, Rock and Roll's a Vicious Game, Ooh, What a Night, You Could Have Been a Lady, Roller, Like a Lover, Like a Song, I'm on Fire for the for You, Baby, the live version, Lady Run, Lady Hide, Bad Side of the Moon, the Elton John, Bernie Toppin hit, I Wouldn't Want to Lose Your Love, You Won't Dance With Me, Tonight is a Wonderful Time to Follow Up. Man, that's in seven years that they, they were able to, to do that. Harder, Faster, you know the cover of this one, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, that's the one where they took what ha they had on first glance and they went, let's let's uh, pedal to the metal, um, just full speed ahead as far as their their little trip to the U.S. They they did uh, 21st Century Schizoid Man, which was of course the the Fripp uh, uh, song. I like to rock. Say hello were singles. But songs like Babes in Arms, if you know April Wine at all, like the harmonizing with the guys in the band, amazing. And they sounded so good live. Again, if you're just joining us, we don't have too much information. Miles Goodman has passed away. He was the main man. He was the guy. No April Wine without Miles Goodman. He's the one that was spearheading all the hits, wrote almost all the big hits of the band, sang most of them throughout the years, even though Jim Clinch and Brian Greenway, Jim Clinch next, then Brian Greenway. Uh, sang some songs too. So then, uh, hold on, let me let me let me get you the harder faster. Let me get that to you. Harder faster was the quintessential quintessential April Wine album. If you didn't like that album, you're not gonna like April Wine. The one with the lion. There you go. Harder, harder faster, and then Nature of the Beast. That's what I meant. Nature of the Beast. Um, not. A bad track. I will, people always ask me, what is a perfect April Wine album? I'm going, I'm not saying it's my perfect, but if I was going to sell April Wine on anyone, The Nature of the Beast and Harder Faster, um, Stand Back, uh, are the albums that I, I would say. You know, I, the follow-up to Nature of the Beast, which, uh, hold on, what was it called again? I, oh, yeah. Um, they had rock ballads in there that came out. Oh, yeah, Power Play. I, I was incredibly disappointed with Power Play. I remember going, I wanted Nature of the Beast and just as hard for Power Play, but Power Play did incredibly well in the U.S. as well. So there you go. But getting back to Nature of the Beast, my perfect rock April Wine album, All Over Town. I mean, really, the second I heard that, I remember going, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they've gone harder, faster, even harder. Um Sign of the Gypsy Queen, Lawrence Hud song. Also, Just Between You and Me. Crash and Burn. Write it down. Write down Crash and Burn. And listen to that. That's April Wine. Maybe not at their fastest, but they're pretty fast on there. I remember my son did a, 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 my, a drum cover, and I sent it to Miles Goodwin. And, of course, he never got back to me. And we're going, come on, man. This kid is killing it on this. But he never got back. Uh, and I know it got to him. So, um, Wanna Rock was a good song. Not uh, Future Tense, Big City Girls, Crash and Burn, Bad Boys, One More Time, Before We Go, One More Song on the Radio, right? Just incredible what Miles Goodwin managed to do. And then, let's mention, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, the I mean, the, the Henman brothers and the cousin, Richie, were an integral part of getting this band off the ground. But by the time Electric Jewels was, was gone, uh, um, the Henman brothers were gone. Richie Henman was gone. And it was basically uh, Jim Clinch, Miles Goodwin. Jim Clinch, Miles Goodwin, Gary Moffat, and Jerry Mercer in the band. They're my favorite Canadian band. That's why I'm going off here. I did the, uh, I'll, if you're watching this not live later on, I'll put in the, the top 25 April Wine songs that I did on Rock History Book. If you put in Rock History Book, Top Canadian April Wine songs. You'll you'll get my top twenty five, which we did nuts on uh, on production. Miles Goodman loved it. He's it's one of the few times since on my interview with him that he actually said, "Wow, this is really cool." So he really liked it. 
classic version of April Wine. Miles Goodwin, main guy, right? Uh, Brian Greenway, who's still the only guy left in April Wine. No original members left in April Wine. But April Wine's one of those bands where you're not going to look at original members. You're going to look at heyday members. And these were the guys. Miles Goodwin, Brian Greenway, Gary Moffat, Jerry Mercer, and Steve Lang. And Steve's gone now, too. So there's three members of that band that are gone. Jim Clench, his replacement, Steve Lang, and now Miles Goodwin. And again, I have to say... Strange day, you know. I just got, I just got two, I just got these two cartridges for my two Akai turntables. Just came in today from Amazon, and you know what I was going to put on as the first one because I haven't played vinyl for a little while because you don't want to ruin your vinyl with a bad needle. I was going to put on Nature of the Beast, and then Stand Back, and then the whole world's going, the whole world's going crazy. Um, and then my friend Keith got a hold of me and let me know, Keith, you're the bearer of bad news, but I appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Let's see if we got some comments. Um, oops. What did I do? There we go. Let me read some comments. Uh, pause to purr. Love Day Pool Wine. One of my favorite real rock bands. Uh, Godzuka Life. Uh, Justiny says, what is Harder Faster about? Uh, Harder Faster is just a, a, a April Wine album. Glenn Peters, Electric Jewels, April Wine's broadest and richest music, musically. Electric Jewels was just amazing. And remember, if you turn Electric Jewels backwards, there's a picture. And Miles talked about it when I talked to him. And so did Brian Greenway. And I think maybe Jerry Mercer talked to, uh, about the fact that the guy in the street with his head down like that. Um, what was the story? The photographer... They got a hold of the guy. He was a street person. They found his family or something. I'd, I'd have to look at the interview again. Uh, I, I found the, the problem with my April Wine interview is I had Jerry Mercer on one side and Miles Goodwin on the other side. No, Jim Clench on one side, Miles Goodwin on the other side. So the paper that I wrote for in Vancouver wanted, and because I, I did the, the interview in Vancouver, they wanted a thing on Jerry Mercer. Uh, it was a spiritual magazine, but they said, well, he's religious. Let's find out about what he believes in, in you know, because he, ha I think he had a heart attack and he eventually left April Wine, uh, the drummer. So I did a thing on that. And then Miles was on the other side. For whatever reason, I misplaced the cassette. I'm sure it's in this house. I, I have Brian Greenway and Jim, uh, and uh, Brian Greenway and Jim Clinch. Yeah. Is that the way it goes? I forget. John says, love the video of For Enough is Enough. Yeah, I like that song. <clears throat> Terry French, Big City Girls, Crash, Crash and Burn, man. Yeah, that was a great song. Uh, Godzuka, saw the Power Play tour in Winnipeg. That was the second to last tour I saw. Like I said, I saw it for one more than any other band uh, at um, seven times. And I'm trying to think of who I saw secondly. I can't even think. Terry French, I still have Harder Faster, Nature of the Beast. Power play, my all-time, hey, Steve uh, Cloutier, my all-time favorite band, first band I got into, heard Roller and was hooked. Thank you. Uh, Dana uh, Secundiak, devastated. Miles and April One were amazing. Nowhere Man said, oh, King Crimson, that's right, uh, 21st century schizoid man. Nowhere Man, lots of songs, great songs. Bertrand Dugas says he was as good in the lead as he was a rhythm guitar. Very decent, nice man, personal life. Uh, John Oxis says, rest in peace. Good singer, roller. Joe Mel, rest in peace, favorite band, too young. You could have been a lady. It's so strange that you could have been a lady. was sounded such like a quintessential April Wine song, though it was a hot chocolate song. And they did a few covers through the years. Um, always like a band that, cover, that does covers Though I never liked covers, but the first version of You Could Have Been a Lady I ever heard was the April Wine song. Then I went back and listened to Hot Chocolate, and I went, wow, that's very different. But you tend to own the version you hear first. It's kind of like Frampton Comes Alive, right? Most of us heard all the Frampton songs via live versions, and then especially something's happening. You know, the first song on Frampton Comes Alive. When I heard Frampton Comes Alive, Something's Happening on the studio version, I'm going, yeah, it's okay. But the live version's way better. Though it might have been the other way around if I'd heard the studio version first, right? So I have 160 people on here, so I'm going to continue. We don't have a lot of information as far as what 
uh, took Miles from us at 75 years old. He lived a long life. He lived in Miami for a long, long time. Um, I don't think he lived in Miami anymore when I had a chance to, when I talked to him in 2000. Let me put this down. Pretty sure he didn't, but I might be wrong. Uh, Jim Beam, damn, all the good mu mu musicians, all the music greats are getting older and eventually die. Reminds me of my own mortality. You know, uh, and Melody R says, Love Weeping Widow. That's a great song. Um, that's the thing. That's the big thing here of going. And when I was talking to Jeff Skunk Baxter a little while ago for the third time, I said, you watching the clock? He said, yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm not afraid of it. But... You know, he he, should, he he said something about the passing of time. Ever notice? Everyone who's watching right now. Ever notice? I'm not saying anything that we don't know. But our minds are processing time a lot faster as we get older. A year just goes like that. And we're, you know, I'm telling my son who's 20 years old, I'm telling him, uh, you know, um, be discerning with your time. Before you know it, you'll be 65. I'm 63. Be discerning, uh, do the right thing, breathe a little bit, stop realizing that you're very lucky to be 20 years old. He feels it. He's very lucky. Uh, no matter how old you are, again, I don't want to overstate the obvious. You know, I don't want to dumb it down, but no matter how old you are, whenever we lose someone that made a difference in our lives, and if you've heard some of my interviews, sometimes near the end of the interview, I'll always go, hey, man to man. You know, thanks. You, you you made a difference in my life. I told that to Stuart Copeland. I I I don't do it to Rick Emmett anymore because I've talked to him so many times. But but I'll tell people, thank you for making a difference in my life. Thank you for being there. Because you never know how long they're going to be there or you're going to be around. Man, it's again overstating the obvious. It's fleeting. It's crazy. I think the fifth time I'm going to say this, I never thought I'd be doing a live feed on this channel. You know, this I love this channel. This channel pays for my bills. It does. I still have my radio job, but this, my main income is from this channel. But I never think, I think of this channel as a love for what I, I've always loved, rock and roll, but also the fact that I, I, I'm saying goodbye as you are to people that made a big difference in our lives. I can't imagine a year of my life where since I, I didn't get into April 1 in 71, 72, but I, I think probably by 73, I, I found them. And there's always been Miles Goodwin has did something, put a little something in my life every single year since then, right? Even when I interviewed him and he was grumpy, you know, and he could be grumpy. I've talked to a lot of people about Miles Goodwin. He could be a grumpy guy, but what you saw is what you got, right? I mean, a lot of people who watch this channel have, have heard me grapple with this interview I had with this guy, who was my hero, who was really grumpy. But at the end of it, I went, well, he signed 20-some albums for me, as well as, you know, Jim Clench, who's now gone too, uh, Jerry Mercer and, and, and uh, uh, B -B Brian Greenway. Uh, they did that. They, they made, a, they made a, a difference. So to, to them, I say thank you. But, man, what about a weird stamp in my life? Being on here and saying that Miles Goodwin has passed away, he was 75 years old. When he left April Wine, I didn't know, I mean, we ultimately don't know. We will sooner or later. Did he leave April Wine because he knew he was not well? He didn't look well. Let's, let's go there. Miles, for the last five to 10 years had, but you know, is it because he was getting older? I mean, the guy's 75. So everyone ages in certain ways. People prune, they end up pruning, you know, their faces because they're getting older. They, they, they can't put, they don't keep weight on for whatever reason. Sometimes it's sickness. Sometimes it's just DNA and getting older. Right. Um, I have I interviewed, I'm not going to say it was, I interviewed a, a rocker a little while ago. I've interviewed him a lot of, a lot of times. You might figure out who he is, but but he says, you know, I can't keep weight on anymore. He says, I, I wish that would have happened in some other parts of my life because I, I'm just getting older. And my DNA has prospered in that way. So, so Miles has looked sick for the last few years, but I just thought he's just getting older. 
You know, that's probably the way he's aging. That, that's fine. So as I wrap up here, um, may he rest in peace. Strange day. You know, I don't want to make it about me, but we're all going through that thing of going, wow, my hero. You know, my, Can my biggest Canadian hero. Um, who right from their second album, you could have been a lady. I mean, I started waning after Nature of the Beast. Power play, I liked, I didn't love. But, you know, throughout the, like, uh, you could have been a lady. Uh, then there was Weeping Widow and Electric Jewels and, and all the stuff off Stand Back. You know, I wouldn't want to lose your love. Jim Clinch with Ooh, What a Night. Um, crazy. And then, of course, the, the Harder, Faster stuff, the First Glance stuff, then Harder, Faster, and then Nature of the Beast. Classic albums that, when you look at top Canadian albums, see, that's the thing. People say they're your favorite Canadian bands. Where do their albums stack as far as top Canadian albums? I'm going, yeah, well, they probably easily have three in my top ten of Canadian albums of all time. Easy. And, and it, again, I'll put my top 25 April Wine songs, which, by the way, is not based on my opinion. It's based on uh, a poll that I had that we used to have polling software we subscribe to, and people would just go on and subscribe and vote for their favorite uh, Canadian songs, and that's kind of what happened. So we had that on there. Um, I might go on the Canadian channel later on, and we'll talk about uh, April Wine some more, uh, Rock History Canada. Chances are I will a little later on, and just we'll, we'll talk about the reactions to uh, Miles passing away and what people are saying. So there you go. Um, thanks for the folks who joined us. I appreciate that. What a sad day. You know, a real Canadian icon. Again, my favorite of all time. And I'm glad I had a chance to interview him um, only once, but we've got other interviews with Miles that I will go out of my way to try to put up as fast as possible. My friend Steve Burgess, who interviewed, who gave me all his interviews, interviewed Miles when he was releasing his first solo album. Um, there might be another interview or two in there that we have in the can uh, from cohorts, from colleagues throughout the years. Uh, and it's so strange. It's on this little 350 interviews on this memory stick right here, uh, mostly from the 80s that we haven't had the time to put up because we're so busy with our own interviews. Because like I said, we did 30 interviews in 40 days in the last month. So that's been insane. Miles Goodwin, uh, may you rest in peace. We'll try to come on the Canadian channel, Rock History Canada, in a little bit. And in the meantime, I'll put a link to the top 25 April Wine songs in the description of this video once we get it done. So take good care of yourself. Thank you, everyone who's come on. Uh, oh, God, I've got, before I could, I'd be remiss if I didn't. Uh, a Wayward Spirit, I Want to Rock, Rock On, Miles, Terry French, Best Three Canadian Rock Bands of All Time, Rush, Triumph, and April Wine, Good Choices. Uh, Michael B. Smith, Hard to Believe. Uh, Mark K. Grew up listening to April Wine. Uh, Godzuka. One of the first songs I learned to play on bass was Enough is Enough. Oh, cool. Rest in P. Miles. Reagan Against the Machine. Oh, uh, C. Truth said he had diabetes. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate that information. Anyway, uh, thanks for all the comments. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll come on a little later on on the Canadian channel. Take good care. John Bowden, Rocky Street Music.